Okay, this how-to video is going to show you how to create a footprint using the PCB Editor tools. Um, I'm going to create uh, the footprint I have here two different ways. I'm going to start off, you can see from the footprint, it's, a, it's a, an LGA package. So we've got a couple of ways to do this. We can do this manually one by one, adding the pins and drawing the lines and the shapes, um, which I'm going to show you after this. Um, but to start off with, we're going to show you the quick and easy way using one of the, the, the PCB Editor wizards. So we'll use a BGA wizard for this. So it's file, new... And we're going to say a package symbol wizard. Let's give it a name. There's the wizard option. So we'll pick BGA. I'm going to load the default cadence template. Uh, I'm then going to start to look at things like the unit. So for this example, it's millimeters. And you can change the accuracy if you wish. There's also a reference designator placeholder. Um, I'm going to leave U star as the default. Then I start to get into the, the matrix that I need to build. So we've got an 11 by 7 matrix. So in fact, let's have the PDF up here and we'll just have the window there. So we've got 7 by 11, which gives me the 77 pins. And that's going to give me a full matrix. I can then go and delete the, the pins afterwards, or we can use kind of some of the, the perimeter matrix, which will let me do it for inner ones, but for this kind of thing, it might be a bit tricky. So we'll just actually use the, we'll delete the pins afterwards. We'll click next. Then how do we want the pins numbered? So we've, we've got A1 to A7 and then A to L. So we want... Uh, letter right number up and you can see the graphic here giving us the correct orientation of the numbering then we get into some of the information so I've got a pitch of 1.27 and I've got a 15 by 9 in the, the outer dimensions of the size pad stack for pins so I want to use an LT module pad we'll just click next and finish and away we go and there's our basic kind of matrix so once that's there we can use the delete command to just delete uh, those and those. That then gives us our kind of setup for the matrix. So the final thing we need to do is, is change this pad stack. You can see it's got a corner cutout on pin one. So I can use the, the, the tools pad stack replace, uh, select A1. We'll give it a different pad stack name. So I've got the LT pin one. And I only want to do this on pin A1. So we'll then replace pin A1. Last thing is, um, is height, because uh, there was no entry to put a height in in the wizard. So we can just do a setup areas, package height, select the place boundary top, and give the height. And I think the height is uh, 4.42. So just go in and add a 4.42 max height. So that concludes kind of doing this using the wizard function. I'm now going to show you how to use it. Um, generating just a package symbol and putting all these inputs in manually. So we'll start off, we'll do a file new, I'm going to do a package symbol and then browse to the pad path, PSM path location, um, PSM path specifically because it's a symbol. So, and I'm just going to call this Steve and click OK. So under the colour options, the important thing really here is the, is the drawing origin. So I'm just going to change my drawing origin to a different colour. And then I'm going to use the setup change drawing origin just to give me a, a place in the, in the centre of the screen so we can kind of get round to, to where we want to do the part. So this is the, the central zero zero location. And if you look at the, the data sheet, we've got a, a grid based for the, for the pins that we need to do. So we've got A1 to A7 going up to E, E123. E uh, five, six, and seven. <coughs> so let's just zoom in onto the data sheet a little bit so we can actually see the grid locations. So we'll start off, we'll use effectively the, the, the layout pins command, and you can see the options menu changes. We then want to browse for the pad. Um, there's another video that talks about pad designers, but it's important to have a name of a pad stack that we're using. So got one called uh, pad one and pad two so there's my pad and you can see that's my my odd shaped pad and that then needs to be placed at a specific coordinate so it's it's 6.35 3.81 so let's start so we'll use the, the command line reference and we can literally just type x there's a lowercase minus 6.35 minus 3.81 and that adds one pad in basically on that specific coordinate the text location is located obviously offset based on these coordinates and this is the text blank numbers. So I made a, a small mistake there, so let's just do a right mouse button, oops. I want this pin to be called A1. I maybe want to change this to be minus 0 0.5, 0 0.3. And then we'll do the same thing again. So it's X 
minus 6.35 minus 3.81. That then places that text there. So I can then do a, a, a next or an oops, uh, and we'll then go and browse for the for the different pad stacks. So I now want the, the other pad, so I want the full square pad to add in effectively A2 to A7. So we go back to PCB editor. I want to add six pins in the Y direction, going upwards based on a 1.27 pitch. I'm going to be A2. So this time it's going to be the coordinate would be 2.546.35. So it's X is minus 6.35 minus 2.54. That then adds in the seven pins. <coughs> it's then a case of either using the grid array to kind of add in all the pins. So I then want to add in the next rows of in. Now I could add these as a block, but the disadvantage of doing that is obviously the pin number would then label it based on the A numbers. So you could do that and then edit the text, or you can just add the, the, the parts in manually. So we'll start off, we want to add in B1. This time I want to add seven pins, and I'm going to say the coordinate's going to be X is minus 5.08, minus 3.81. That gives me the Bs. Work away for the C's. So it's X is minus 3.81, minus 3.81. We then want the D's. Minus 2.54, minus 3.81. E's 0.27 minus 2.54 minus 1.27 minus 3.81 the F's 'm just adding in the pins manually So need to add in H, J, K, and L. So I've made a mistake there. So let's go back. H, J, 1, 2.54 minus 3.81. pins so that gives us our full array I then need to delete some pins so based on this we need to, to get rid of effectively H 1 to 4 and then the the 4s on J, K and L so we can use the, the edit delete command to effectively get rid of of H1, H2, H3, H4, and work our way around. That gives us our, our basic pinout. The next thing we need to do is then add things like silk screen and assembly lines. So we can just use a, let's add a rectangle, and we'll add it to the layer, package geometry, assembly top, and this is based on the data sheet. So we're looking at kind of a, a nine by 15. So we'll start the rectangle at X is minus 7.5, minus 4.5, and then going to go up to X is 9, uh, 4.5, sorry. That gives us our basic rectangle size. We also want to add things like a silk screen outline. Now, this time I'm actually going to use a line, so we'll use the package geometry and then 
silk screen top and I want to give the line a thickness 0.2 uh, I'm going to use this as 90 so I can start this using the, the X and Y commands again minus 7.5 minus 4.5 but this time I'm going to use the, the IY 9 so it's an incremental coordinate 9 in the, in the Y direction and then incremental X 15 incremental y minus 9 and then incremental x minus 15 that gives me my basic silk screen outline so that's silk screen we might want to add kind of a pin one marker if you wanted using something like a circle so we could again use the same principle and just add a circle I need to change my grid settings so let's just use setup grids let's just make these uh, a little bit finer So I've now got a, a finer grid to, to make my circle and then we can move that into, into location uh, for pin one. I then want to add uh, a keep out area which we can add a height definition to so we're going to add a shape, shape rectangular on package geometry this time we want place bound top and again this is going to start at is minus where well, fat let's use the right mass button so we'll use a right mass button snap pick to intersection of those two lines and a right mass button snap pick to the intersection of those two lines so you can see I've got the shape there and then using setup areas package height select the shape I've got a minimum height and a maximum height you can see from the graphic what those are going to give you I've only got a maximum height and the symbol here is 4.42 so let's just go in and add a height of 4.42 so if I was then, then do a 3D view, you can kind of see I've got a basic 3D view of the block. So the final thing I need to do is add some, some reference designators. So if I did a layout for labels, refdes, I've got refdes for assembly and for silk screen, textbook locations, marker sizes. Let's just make it textbook three. Uh, and assembly, I'm going to put that right in the middle. So I'm going to use U question mark. Now this can be, it's just a placeholder, it takes in whatever's in the schematic, so as long as you have something on that layer, that's the important thing. I'm also going to have one for the silk screen top, and we'll make this U question mark there. That's my symbol completed. We'll then save the symbol, and it saves the DRA file, and then writes the, the, the PSM file that's associated with it.